All right. Hello there, and welcome to Plugin Alongs, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. Last time on Plugin Along, we started doing some long awaited cleanup tasks uh, with the Minster Buff plugin. Uh, including updating how the options system works. Previously, whenever we added an option, we needed to add a couple of new helper functions and a new callback function, and it was getting kind of cumbersome uh, as the options file kept growing and growing to hold all of that. So today, we're going to finish cleaning up the options code and either get distracted doing more cleanup or get back to the melodic interlude window and add our quarter salvation and raise the spirit uh, skills there. Also, this month, we're celebrating the one-year anniversary of Plug It Along. Uh, and to celebrate, if Little Redhead is up for it, we'll do some Lotro Point giveaways during the stream. Uh, as always, feel free to jump into chat with your thoughts and questions. And in the meantime, let me go ahead and pull up some windows. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, thanks, Chatty. This stream is online. <laughs> well, hopefully that means people can hear me. Okay, let me go ahead and switch over to my desktop view. Well, I will uh, join Aki here with a sip of water. Okay, so it's been a week. It's been a very busy week. I haven't done any plugin development. And so a skill that I would encourage you all to learn is kind of the skill of picking up where you left off a week ago, even if you've forgotten everything you did. But source control is here to the rescue. Because we are taking, uh, we are committing our code, we're taking snapshots as we build things, as they work, um, we are able to see what is different since the last snapshot. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my source control program. I'm using Fork, which is wrapped around a Git repository. And it's able to tell me what is different since the last snapshot. So for instance, we can see some changes in buff window. We can see lots of changes in the options window. This is very good. So um, we're gonna take a moment to walk through these changes. But first, let's go ahead and uh, bring up, using the carrot menu and system, we're gonna go ahead and bring up our plugin manager. And just remember, what is this plugin that we're working with? Okay, so Minstrel Buff, when you load it, it will first appear in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. There's a couple different windows to worry about. There's the, the core of Minstrel Buff window, but there's also the Soliloquy Tracker, and now the Melodic Interlude window. So I'm gonna go ahead and move them all over to a little bit more central location. And in the Plugin Manager, there's also an Options window. So some of the options include, is this thing only invisible in combat? Asterisk. Uh, and what does it look like, and some other things. And I have some debug options en enabled, which will hopefully help uh, with future development. Okay, so let's go back and revisit. What changed uh, during the last stream, but hasn't been committed yet? This will kind of refresh our memory. Now, we, of course, have made some changes to our to-do file, uh, you know, simplify the setting system, awesome. Uh, in fact, we kind of promoted that from a later task. Um, okay, so the settings, what did we do in the settings? Cool. Well, uh, it might be a little easier to look at the settings file itself and remember what was kind of a problem about it. So the settings uh, file had these pairs of functions. Um, so setting git check for serious business, setting set check for serious business. Show war speech timers, set war speech timers. Uh, show melodic interlude, set melodic interlude. So every time we were adding an option, we, had, we were adding a pair of functions and a uh, callback that needed to be initialized somewhere else. And the goal with this is to go ahead and simplify that down. We can reference a callback and the settings uh, with a more generic function. Um, because we are accessing a settings table, show melodic interlude. Settings table, show melodic interlude. If the callback were itself in a table with the key of show melodic interlude, then a single parameter, the thing, the name of the thing that we're trying to, uh, to work with, is going to be enough uh, to replace all of this with some generic functions. What does that look like? Um, we have a git setting. You pass in the setting name. Cool. That's in the settings table. We have set setting. 
we pass in the name and the new value and it's going to go ahead and apply that and save uh, and that's that's the the function that saves out to a file and also trigger callback that is uh, just a helper that says if this uh, if we have a callback that is if it's not nil uh, and if it is an actual function then go ahead and try to call the function So those are our, um, our four generic functions that we're going to use to replace a bunch of this. Uh, now, there are some more complicated functions here, and we might see what we can do about those as well. But for those things that are, for those settings that are just yes, no, on, off, one, zero, uh, very simple values, or even more complicated values, uh, well, we might get rid of the more complicated. Hmm. Uh, Captain... Uh, asks, is this a reg edit thing? This is, um, I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you can use simpler um, text editors. For instance, uh, for a while, I just used Sublime Text. Um, whoops, I don't want to click that. So, for instance, in Sublime Text, you can go ahead and also open up, uh, what were we in? Uh, settings. Uh, Sublime Text, uh, if it's more than a basic text editor like Notepad, uh, your text editor can have a syntax highlighting like this. It can have some basic navigation like, oh, I'm calling self-load. Take me to where that's defined. Oh, it's right here. Or detect localization. Oh, cool, it's down here. So we're looking at Lua script files, which uh, Lua is just a programming language. And you can find out more about Lua at, I want to say it's just Lua.org. Yep, Lua.org. Uh, so you can find out more information about Lua at Lua.org. Um, but because this is a Lua interpreter that is baked into Lord of the Rings Online, it's using a specific version and a specific kind of Lua. So it's, uh, we can see Lua is all the way up to version 5.4.4. The, the, the version of Lua in Lord of the Rings Online is Lua 5.1, and a somewhat restricted version of that as well. You're not going to be making any uh, network calls or visiting websites with your plugins here. Oh yeah, um, Little Redhead is going to go ahead and open up a giveaway for 100 Lotro points. Uh, and so if you would like Lotro points, you can do an exclamation point giveaway in chat to enter. And we'll go ahead and draw that in, oh, 20 or 30 minutes or so. Give people a chance to uh, tune on in, as it were. All right, and it's open. Go! Excellent. Captain's in there first. Okay, so... Um, I'm using Visual Studio Code, uh, which is useful because community member Lunar Water has produced a delightful Lotro API extension for Visual Studio Code. And this is, as it says, adding IntelliSense for the Lotro API elements. So for instance, if I came in here and I said turbine dot, it's going to auto uh, uh, give me a list of options. So for instance, maybe I want shell. Turbine.shell, what are my options here? Oh, cool, I want right line. Uh, and what, what can I do here? Well, it's going to take text. Fun. Uh, and so that extension there, which is built on top of the Lua extension itself, uh, is super useful um, for identifying where you might have made a mistake uh, before you have to load the plugin in Lord of the Rings Online. <laughs> And Captain says, being present, that mean in-game or just being here? That's uh, present in the Twitch chat, at least, uh, and hopefully even watching, if you're able to. Um, excellent. Some other people jumping into the giveaway here as well. So, um, oh, sorry. Uh, so, yes, that's Visual Studio Code. This is a free program you can download from Microsoft for personal use, and the extension is also free. Uh, and it's just nifty. So um, that's what I'm using, but you do not have to use Visual Studio Code. Any text editor will do. Uh, and once I've made changes and I'm happy with it, I just come back into Lord of the Rings Online. I've got it running in the background. I unload and then reload. So if you change a plugin file, Lord of the Rings Online does not know. When it loads the files, it's done looking at the files. Uh, they sit in memory. And so if you make changes, you need to unload that plugin 
and reload it to see what, what changed. So for instance, if I wanted to make a change here, I could say turbine.ui, sorry, turbine.shell.writeline, and we're just gonna say, hello there, plug in along, exclamation point. Um, so, uh, in order to see that though, oh, it's gotta happen before the return, of course. Thank you, syntax highlighting. Uh, so I unload, I reload, and we can see in the chat, uh, in the standard uh, pl uh, channel output, hello there, plugging along. Awesome. <laughs> Captain does hear a dog out. There's a very excited dog out there. Um, it's a, so one of the side effects of living in a, a row house is that every once in a while there's noise in the backyard that you're like, huh, that's an interesting choice. <laughs> Most of the time the neighbors are, are, are nice and quiet though. Okay, so uh, we can see we unloaded, we reloaded. I happen to, to know that this function gets called as part of loading the plugin, and we saw the output here in chat. So that's a quick little change, unload, reload um, cycle to go ahead and test a change for a plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. If I unload and reload, we see we didn't get a hello there plugin long. Captain says, rural life for me. I could see that. We live in a town of around 15,000 people, but it's a pretty small area, so around three square miles if you like the imperial system. Uh, and so it, I can cycle for five minutes in several directions and be surrounded by pasture land uh, or horses or sheep or whatnot. So there's plenty of people here, but the people stop really close by. So take that as you will. Um, okay, so that was sort of what's going on with settings, and here's what had changed. Uh, we can see we added a table, and we want that table to store these callbacks. So it's just going to be a settings changed table, and effect window <laughs> only visible in combat changed uh, is going to be part of that table. In fact, I'm still struggling a little bit to use forks. Um, side by uh, comparison, I'm going to pop out to a different, uh, this is beyond compare, I'm quite fond of it. Again, it's an optional thing, you don't need to use it as a comparison, but we can uh, sometimes see things lining up a little bit easier. So um, I'm going to go ahead and move that down. Our new generic helper functions are replacing, first of all, the get effect window only visible in combat and set effect window only visible in combat uh, lines. And so, uh, excellent. And then we can see that the effect window only visible in combat change explicit callback variable has been replaced with uh, just looking for um, the self settings changed right there. Awesome. Oh, I also have an assigned callback. I'm not sure I'm gonna make use of that, but I probably am. It's an interesting experiment. Okay, so that is what's going on with the settings. Um, we also have, uh, oh, um, what is changed here? Ah, yes. Um, in the options, the names of these values didn't line up with the name being used in options. And it's, it's an arbitrary choice, but um, if we can just use the same key for both the text being shown and these other things, uh, it just makes life a little bit easier. So uh, that's what's going on. We're, we're changing use soliloquy tracker to soliloquy window used. Check for serious business, just spelling it differently, and so on. Uh, and we went ahead and added in a few new effect uh, uh, translations while we are added. That's cool. Uh, and the same changes in the German and French files. Okay. Um, we'll hold off on committing anything just yet. We can see in the option window, what did we do here? We still have our debug flag set to true. That's what's letting us see those debug options, but we wouldn't ship that out. Uh, so, so the average uh, player wouldn't uh, be distracted by those. Okay, we can see that only visible in combat was never localized. Well, that would be neat if we can uh, localize it. And so we can go ahead and give reference 
to a language string. And then if there is a, a translation for it, that'll get used. Excellent. Here we can say, see, instead of the get effect, I wonder if I can make this a little wider. There we go. So instead of get effect window only visible in combat, we're now getting a setting for effect window only visible in combat. So it reads pretty similar. Same thing here. Uh, in fact, we have some localization here. I think that needs to be its own commit. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we have this line here where we're uh, localizing that text. Awesome. Here, select theme, we're localizing that text. And then, oh, excellent. That's just a space, I don't need that. Um, okay, so that's, that's a start. So those localizations here, we can go ahead and commit just that. Uh, and I like to commit like reasonable chunked things, like a, a single concept. And here the concept is we localize these two strings um, huh. Well, that didn't do it the way I was hoping for. Just a moment. Let me see what happens if I stage the whole thing and then unstage that. Oh, nope, it still wants to add it to the end. You know what? I, I'm okay with that. There at the beginning, that'll just be uh, taken care of in the next commit. That's fine. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and localize these by adding these entries into the language files. Awesome. So what's that message? Added new trans, uh, no, just localized um, two option strings. Cool. So by committing that as its own snapshot, uh, now when we're looking, uh, these, not that one, uh, these uh, are simpler, hopefully. Uh, it's just the stuff that is changing for the settings changes. Okay. So the option window, yep, we're using git setting. Um, oh, the spelling change, I think that's actually good too. Changed the string keys to match options better. So here's where we can go ahead and capture this change, just changing how those keys are spelled or capitalized or whatnot. And in the settings, it doesn't look like it's a thing, but in the option window where it's actually used, it's definitely a thing. So uh, use the Loku tracker, now it's the Loku window used stage. Check for serious business, yep. Show war speech timers, yep. And show melodic interlude, we're gonna take that also. So the only things we don't have are the get setting and set setting calls that have been replaced. Cool, so that's a, another little uh, bit unto itself. Let's see, anything else? Assign callback, get setting, okay, all of this, all of that, nope, we're good. Okay, so we can go ahead and uh, commit this, change the string keys to, to match options better snapshot. Awesome. Yep. And the, the list of things that we haven't committed yet is a shrinking. Removed combined string file. So a lot of plugins, including some of mine, start um, start with a combined file that has all of the different languages that are available. So for instance, the drag bar title, we have soliloquy tracker or in, in German. But what I'm starting to prefer is having each file be its own. Like there's an English language, a Dutch language, sorry, German language, a French language, and then you conditionally load one of those files. And it feels like it makes the development a little bit more complicated, but it makes the, the code a little bit easier. So you don't have to have constantly ask, oh, which language am I? Okay, I gotta go get the right one. By definition, you're only loading the correct values into memory. Uh, so I'm liking that. And so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and for now, remove this combined strings file. But because this we're using a, a source control, we can always bring this file back. We can always come back and say, nope, that was a bad idea, undo. This is a gigantic undo button. So we're gonna go ahead and commit that. Okay, so we have the options window that's making use of get and set. We have the settings itself, the buff window making use of get and set. Awesome. 
Captain says, Electric Community has always been one of us based. It's what keeps me playing. And Little Redhead says, it's really a great community. I think that's why I get annoyed when people complain about something. I'm like, do you not know how good you have it? I can appreciate that. You know, it's not always about uh, whether something is, is, you know, slightly bad or not. It, it's, you know, it's human, humans don't have great calibration. Like Something is different and I don't like it. Captain says, definitely always save before modifying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so just, just from a visual perspective, here's all the different uh, commits or snapshots that I've taken over time uh, when playing around with minstrel buffs. So each one of those is hopefully a, a concrete concept in code. OK, so we've kind of boiled it down to just the, the settings change. And so now we can go ahead and pick up where we left off which is going ahead and replacing these, excuse me, these hard-coded functions with a more generic get setting. It's not get effect window only visible in combat, it's get setting. Um, and yeah, let's uh, go ahead and do that. Oh, thanks, Little Redhead. There is currently a giveaway live. It's for 100 Lotra points. Type exclamation point giveaway to enter. Herr Harkador says, hello folks, or hi folks, greetings from Germany, greetings from the Netherlands. Roughly, I don't know, half an hour from the German border, depending on which part of the border you're looking for. Okay, so we have these generic helpers, and below them are the functions that we're looking to get rid of. And so what we can do is find all the uses of get soliloquy window used. Awesome. Go to references is the way you can do it in Visual Studio Code. You can also just search for that text. It's pretty unique. So I've gone ahead and done a search. We can see it's used in three places. Um, so uh, the initial value in the options window, and we'll start there. OK, so instead of get soliloquy window used, we want to go ahead and call get setting. And I don't know what, what to pass here, but it's going to be this, the soliloquy window used um, key. And then we can go ahead and get rid of that. OK, so whoops. Wild, just started hitting the wrong thing there. OK, so we can see now we have the generic get setting function. Uh, looks like there's another. So in the soliloquy tracker window, it looks like we go ahead and use get soliloquy window used to initialize the value. All right, let's get setting. Same thing, soliloquy window used. Awesome. So now we just have the function itself. Nothing else is referencing it. That means we can delete it. Captain asks, we don't have to span the get giveaway command, do we? Uh, correct? Correct. And in fact, when people join, you um, it have been a little while since someone did, uh, but Mubot generally uh, pops into chat how many uh, are currently in there. So it's, I don't know, three, five, something like that. Uh, so you only need to do it once. It, there's no harm in doing it multiple times, just to be sure. Uh, Mubot will not accidentally enter you more than one time. OK, so let's move on to the setter function. Set to the liquid window used. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and do a search. And we can see uh, option window, which is not where we are. Cool. So look, we window used change. So this is a callback in the option window when someone has checked the button. We want to call something. Now we can see up above, this line got kind of long. So I split into multiple pieces. But let's see what that looks like. Uh, so we want to go ahead and self.settings. And we're going to go ahead and set a setting. And that will be soliloquy window used. And the value is going to be uh, the is checked properly property of this um, checkbox. So as we can see, that line has, oh goodness, where do I find the line? Ah, 95 characters on it. And if this window were not as wide as it was, that would be a little annoying to read. So your mileage may vary, your taste may vary. But when a line starts to stretch this long, my preference is to break it up. Um, and this happens mostly on uh, function calls like this. 
So I'll go ahead and put one line, uh, sorry, one uh, parameter per line. So the name of the variable, one line. The state, one line. There's other tricks you can do, uh, like you can assign these things to variables first. So var um, key equals soliloquy window used. And var, oh, sorry, var local. Sorry, that's a C sharp thing. Local uh, value equals, and then you can assign the is checked property to a local. And then you could do self dot settings, set setting, uh, key value. And that is a fine length for a line. I have no problem with that. And in fact, it gets kind of silly if you're, if you dogmatically always put uh, parameters on their own line, then you get something that looks really bad like this, or at least I, I don't find that very, very helpful at all. And so if you have um, simple enough parameter names or few enough parameter names, don't worry about it. Don't feel like you have to put them on multiple lines. But I don't find, I don't know how useful it is to assign these to local parameters just before I pass them off to a function that is, you know, we're in a one line function here. Uh, this feels like overkill. Sometimes I do kill over, but uh, that feels like a little much. So for me, I would just go ahead and do the compromise. Uh, go ahead and inline that key name and go ahead and inline the is checked call and just call it a day. That being said, uh, we have no more uses of this function, which must mean we're done with it. But before we get rid of it, this soliloquy used change, let's go ahead and find any uses to that besides this function. So in settings itself, we have the initial uh, initialization to nil. We no longer need that. In here, we go ahead and self.settings, uh, and we assign to that uh, variable an anonymous function. That's fine. Uh, but we can go ahead and use a helper function. We did that in the buff window. In fact, let me go ahead and just copy that line so we can see it side by side. So what we did was call assign callback, the name of the callback, and the anonymous function. So let's see what that would look like here. OK, first of all, that's the soliloquy window used. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and self.settings assign callback. And here's the name of it. But this uh, next function looks a little long. So let's go ahead and immediately give ourselves some extra space. And we're going to go ahead and use this anonymous function declaration here. So instead of uh, directly assigning to a variable in the settings class, we just use the helper, assign callback, name of the callback, and the function. As I said, I don't know how much I feel like this is necessary versus just doing what assign callback is doing, which is where assign callback. Yeah, it's just setting um, the settings changed value itself. I could go either way on this. This helper function isn't, strictly speaking, necessary. We could just do settings dot settings changed and assign a callback. Um, but the reason why I like this is what we're doing right now is a single dispatch, right? Um, uh, I'll finish musing on this thought, and maybe we'll do a drawing for the current um, Lotro point giveaway. So what we're doing is a single dispatch. That is to say, something happened, tell the one person who cares about it. So if multiple people assign a callback, only the last person gets notified. The rest of them, we forget about them. But there's also multiple dispatch where you can have a list of people who want to know about the thing. And so you just go down the list and say, okay, hey, it happened, hey, it happened, hey, it happened. And you can have multiple dispatch where one person says, oh, I've got it, and it stops the chain. Or you can have multiple dispatch where everyone finds out about it either way. And having everyone just going directly to settings changed means it's still hard to go back in and say, no, what, we can, we can support multiple dispatch by changing this one function and suddenly it all works. And so I feel like this is still useful. Assign callback is good, um, and I'm going to keep it. I've convinced myself I was right. Awesome. 
So we have a signed callback. Uh, here's the callback name, and here's the anonymous function. Beautiful. Now, as I'm looking at this, it feels like this function maybe should have a name. Maybe we should go ahead and define this function outside of this uh, constructor body. But that's not really what we're doing here today. So uh, instead of that, we have this. Excellent. OK, what else do we have? OK, here's where we go ahead and use the thing. So in the settings, we had an assigned callback. Now we have a trigger callback. So we want to do the same thing, where we do self.settings trigger callback. And we'll just pass that na the name of the thing that we're talking about. OK. So whenever the check is changed, we go ahead and trigger that callback. Do we, though? Wait a second. Sorry. I feel like multiple things are named the same, and it's not helping. OK. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, in the options window, we do have an intermediate layer. So we're calling self, soliloquy window use changed. And in this function is where that's happening. Set setting, excellent. So we did not need that. The name of those things being the same is a little worrying. to think about that. But it's probably fine. OK, so we have in the options window some helper functions, and they're just dispatching off to here. I guess the question is, do we need to do that? No. Why do we have this helper function? Normally, when you have a helper function like that, it's to get access to a self variable. But we already have a self variable in the function where we're declaring this anonymous function. So it kind of feels like we don't need that. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Hmm. Excellent. Little Redhead is pointing out that there is a hobbit down here in the 21st hall of the Treebeard server who is demonstrating the hobbit flip. Now, I'm quite a fan of the Hobbit flip. It's uh, excellent. They flip a couple of times, then they're like, yes, I'm great. It's fun. But if you're not a fan of flips, you can also just be confused. OK, so the giveaway is closed. We're going to go ahead and draw a winner. Hey, it's. Uh, the captain. <laughs> if you're still listening, go ahead and say something in chat, and Little Redhead will go ahead and message you on Twitch your 100 Lotro Point code. If you haven't done this before, you'll go into the Lotro store in game, and once it loads up, you'll go ahead and click the redeem code button. In here, you'll go ahead and paste the code that you are sent. And this also works with other things like the giveaways. So for instance, right now there's a giveaway for Rally Horn Time. Uh, and you can do that same thing where you click Apply, and it says, you got the thing. Excellent. All right, I haven't seen anything. Captain OD or Captain D, are you here? <sighs> Excellent, you are. Captain D won the 100 points. Excellent. Little Redhead will get in touch. OK. So uh, I'm thinking this intermediate function is just silly. So let's go ahead and see if we can get rid of that. So what would that look like? First of all, 
we can hoist out the code that's in there up here. So that is just a call to self dot uh, settings set setting. Captain D says, do you, need, do you need my Lutra login name? Absolutely not. Little Redhead is going to send you a code. That code uh, you will go ahead and paste in to the redeem code screen of the Lutra store. And it will just be a code like, you know, A1, B2, C3, and so on. Paste it in there, hit apply. Okay, so we have a check change equals this function, which is gonna go ahead and call set settings with this setting, uh, and the, the value is checked. Now, one of the important things here is we're starting to see a lot of similarities, right? We're, we're pa uh, passing this effect window on the visible in combat, get settings that, set settings that. Suddenly, it's starting to look like we could have a generic function making these things. That's an interesting idea. Okay, uh, but in the meantime, we can go ahead and get rid of this function because nothing is referencing it besides itself. So let's give that a try. Let's go ahead and unload and reload and see what mistakes I might have made. Uh, so this was specifically the only visible in combat. And so if we click it, first of all, the window does hide. And if we unload and reload, we see that it did save correctly. Uncheck it unload, reload, and it's still unchecked. So everything seems to be working correctly. Captain says, I should play Lotro today. Absolutely. Every day is a good day. Oh, the lotto. <laughs> one letter off. <laughs> that one letter is a killer. OK, um, but you should also play Lotro. <laughs> OK, so that was hoisting out um, these um, sort of one-off hard-coded functions into something a little bit more generic. So we're just going to go ahead and run through the next ones, maybe a little bit faster. Uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, or want me to slow down, just uh, throw it out in chat. But we're just going to do the exact same things. We're going to find the use of the functions, we're going to replace them with ge their generic versions, and we're just going to uh, kind of check as we go that the functionality still works even after we did all this. Okay, so we have git check for serious business. Uh, and you know what would be useful is these helper functions here. You know, if I just had a reference uh, for what each of them looks like, just to remind myself. Uh, and it would look something like this. So this is just going to be a little reference for me, uh, to, so I don't have to keep looking back at the, uh, at the settings file. Okay, so oh, that would be a check for me if I had the right side clicked. Okay, so we have a self.check for serious business equals a git check for serious business. Okay. And in that, we can see that the key is check for serious business. Excellent. So let's go ahead and replace that with a uh, git settings. Oops, gotta have that colon in there. Uh, git settings. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and pass in check for serious business. And we can go ahead and get rid of the reference to the named function. And same thing here. Um, check for serious business changed. We can go ahead and replace that with get setting and the name of the value. And we can see that the search here is uh, updating as things get deleted. That's a handy kind of to-do list. Ah, Captain says, I'll do my best to spend it wisely. I know, right? There's so much good stuff. All right, so when we're first setting the value of the checkbox in the options window, we have a set checked. We're gonna go ahead and say get setting and the name of the setting. Okay, and then one more, and that's the function itself. So we can see, uh, 
that's the end of replacing this. Get rid of it. But we can do the same thing with the setting function. So we're going to start in the buff window uh, where we can see we have a set check for serious business. Now I'm a little curious. Where is that called? Oh. Okay, so the main window uh, keeps an eye on the value and tells the buff window when it changes because they both uh, have an interest in knowing what that value is. Okay, uh, I'll allow it for right now and we use it here again. So the buff window has something that is named the same uh, and that's, what, that's okay for right now. So in the option window, we have this uh, check for serious business changed, and we're going to call uh, set setting. But this is another one of those where we might be able to hoist the whole thing back up. So let's start by self.settings, uh, set setting, and we still have that uh, name of the setting on the clipboard. And we're going to go ahead and pass in the is checked value. Awesome. But here's where we can go ahead and just copy that and let's figure out where this is being used. And same thing as before, maybe uh, we don't need this to be an inline function like this. Or uh, maybe we don't need an intermediate function. So what if we just call self uh, set setting here? Uh, we're passing in check for serious business, and we're passing in is checked. In which case, we don't need that function down here. All right, what do we have? Check for serious business, changed, don't need that. I feel like I may have gone one step too far there. Hang on a second. Where, did, where was I? So going back into the settings section, where were we? After the generic helpers, we were at set check for serious business. Okay. So in the buff window, we have that, awesome. In the main window, we call it twice. And in settings, this is, uh, this is the final remaining uh, version of it. Okay, so we are ready for the check for serious business changed. And we can go ahead and get rid of that function. Okay, so we have a self.settings.check for serious business change equals function. Okay, same thing here. We want to go ahead and do self.settings, and that's going to be assign callback, and the name of it is check for serious business, and the function is going to be the thing that we were passing before. OK, so we have a function, uh, sets this, calls the buff window, great. And here's where we had the, the variable that was being used as the callback variable. All right. Now, I was just reminded that the Soliloquy Windows ch used a changed function is also hoistable. So let's take a look at that. Now here, if we go ahead and just space this out a little bit for readability, uh, we can see we were using a pass-through function. But in this case, we didn't need a pass-through function. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do self settings set setting. Soliloquy window used. And the is checked on the soliloquy visible checkbox. Great. So that's one more function we don't need. And I'm a big fan of deleting functions, because code that doesn't run can't be wrong. 
<laughs> or at least it can't break. Uh, cool, so we've only got two of these functions left. That um, seems like a really good progress. Now we've opened up a bunch of these windows. I'm gonna go ahead and close some down. So we just have the settings window, just to kind of reset where we are. All right, so we had the generic helper functions. Next up, get show war speech timers. So same basic process. Find all of them and eliminate them. Okay, so uh, get setting, name of the setting, and delete this. Great. And in that change, we can go ahead and do the same thing. Uh, get setting, name of the setting, and gone. All right. <laughs> Captain says, oh, war seeds, I so want one. So here over on the Treebeard server, time is progressing slowly, and we're just about to get over into the siege of Mirkwood, uh, which, after which I think is Rise of Isengard, after which I think is Rohan, maybe? Uh, so it's going to be a little while before we see War Mantle run this server, which is really interesting because the, uh, the Standing Stone Games team continues development uh, of the Lord of the Rings game while we here on Treefeard are plotting along. And so by the time we get access to War Mounts, they could be radically different than what they are now. Um, I think there's always thoughts at SSG about changing things like War Mounts or, or bringing sy old, old systems a little more up to date. And so... You know, I've certainly played with War Mounts over on Evernight uh, and over on uh, Brandywine uh, Lorland, but uh, may, maybe when they come to Treebeard, they'll be totally different. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping for war tortoises. Uh, I keep hoping for those, but we'll see. Actually, I would really love some tortoise mounts that are just like really slow on land, but then are like extra fast in the water and you don't get dismounted when you're on them in the water. And so they're just on land, they're just kind of plodding along at 75%, but you get in water, it's 150. I keep saying it here in the hopes that someone at SMG hears me and is like, that's a good idea. <laughs> I got this as war steeds, be careful what you wish for. You know, my first experience to war steeds was as a hunter, and they seemed great, right? It's like, oh, this is the best thing ever. And Little Redhead's first experience to them was as a champion? Uh, and she did not have the good time that I was having. And, and then later I got on a war mount as a minstrel and was like, oh, it wasn't the war mount I was having fun with. It was the hunter on a war mount combo that I was having fun with. <laughs> and yeah, Gimli is not the best on war steeds and neither was the red, Redhead's uh, dwarf <laughs> champion. Uh, so, oh well. Okay, so we've gone ahead and replaced that setting. So we're going to come on in and look at the... Uh, initial setting here. That's going to be another uh, get setting uh, with the name. And finally, the original setting itself. Awesome. So that brings us up to, you know what? I should probably do this in the other order. Let's do let's see if we can find that callback first. All right, so we have self.settings, that equals function. We're going to go ahead and do, change it up, self.settings, assign callback. You know, I keep saying assign. That should probably be add callback. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but that'll be a, an easy fix to come back and do. So I'm just not going to bother with it right now. In fact, that's the kind of thing that goes in the to-do. Okay, assign call, oops, assign callback should probably be add a callback. That's a little bit more traditional of a, of a name because then you can pair it up with a remove callback and then you can conceptually expand that to multiple things calling add callback and remove callback as they will. I totally get not doing that when you're first building a plugin though. It's a bit overkill to support multiple dispatch on a property that one thing ever is going to care about. Right, it's just, why'd you do that? You could have done something else. So I, I, I have no problem with the original author of Minstrel Buff not doing like what, what we're doing right here. It's just after we start adding options and adding more options and adding more options, the original system just felt cumbersome compared to what we're doing right now, which is just a little bit more generic, a little bit easier to add a new option. Okay, 
So we have gone ahead and genericized that adding callback. Awesome. What else do we have? Okay, we have some different stuff. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the variable. And here we go. In the set show war speech timers, that's the only place still referencing uh, the function we're talking about. So we can go ahead and delete that and move on to the setter function. Let's go ahead and find each of those. Okay, we'll come back to that one in a moment. There we go. So again, this is gonna be a self.settings set um, setting. And it's gonna be the name of the setting and the value. And in this case, that's gonna be that self is checked. But just like before, this might be a good time to hoist this up and get rid of the whole thing, the whole helper function here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that would be. So in this case, instead of calling the intermediary function, <laughs> I just have it in the chat says, war seeds, I get nauseous trying to ride them. Yeah, uh, I am happy to ride them in circles, but I will hold down my um, primary mouse button to lock the camera in place. So the, the horse is going in circles and my camera goes sort of goes in and out a little bit, but the the field of you know the what is in the field of view just only changes a little bit. And so the horse rides around and my player is changing facing direction. So I can keep shooting things. So I'm holding with my mouse and using my left hand to go ahead and activate the skills and powers that I want to to activate. But yeah, riding around in circles without that is um, not great for me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to replace that intermediary function. We're going to go ahead and instead just call set uh, setting the name of the thing and the is checked. And again, we're seeing a lot of very similar code now. We have these generic functions, so it's get setting, it's set setting, uh, and and the text is using that same key uh, to the point where, remember um, in Lua, when you're doing table uh, access, you have some options. You can do the dot notation here, but you can also do the, whoopsie, the quote notation where you have quote that, and so it's lang dot options, um, and then access uh, via the key, check for serious business, and then suddenly, and it's like, whoa, if you just had that one name, you could kind of do all of this on autopilot. And so I, I'm definitely building up to that, but we're not quite there yet. So if you are already, if your mind's already going in that direction, awesome, that's where my mind is going to. Little Red says, I go on slash follow on the one I'm targeting and close my eyes if I have to. <laughs> yeah, you know, this uh, Lord of the Rings Online isn't the easiest game to play with your eyes closed, but you know, you don't have to have them open the whole time. <laughs> and Little Red points out, remember that i7 is going to be streaming here on the official Lutra stream channel for the first time today at 4 o'clock server time. So do stick around for that. That's in just over an hour. Chromite says, I drink water so sparingly. Uh, it, the water, my glass is actually like practically empty. So I just, I keep on delaying on grabbing the next one. Wow. Oh no, the table's far away from me. <laughs> uh, we, it's, one, uh, it's a table that can expand and contract. And my cousin was here recently with his husband and we had expanded the table and we just recently contracted it. And I think it's moved like a foot further in that direction. It's a little inconvenient. So yes, now real water. But I'm also conscious of the fact that I'm sitting here for another hour, so I don't really want to flood my system uh, the way I might chromite if I were not sitting in front of a camera. Okay, so we have gone ahead and hoisted out this function here, which means the set show war speech timers changed. Um, we can go ahead and eliminate that. This is the only place that is referencing it. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do that and go back to our settings. What else did we have? We have the set war, uh, set show war speech timers. Did we eliminate all of our references to that? Yes, we did. So let's go ahead and kill it. Uh, and let's go ahead and delete this function. 
Corbett says, just get another cup. I have another cup. I have this one and another one. Just waiting to go. Okay. Um, so we have done almost all of these, but we still have uh, get, sh get Show Melodic Interlude and Set Melodic Interlude. Uh, and it was about the time where I was adding the Show Melodic Interlude and Set Melodic Interlude functions. And I was like, this is madness. I keep adding options and I keep not wanting to not add options because it is so cumbersome feeling to do it. I keep thinking I'm going to make a mistake. So this is really um, hopefully opening up the door for me to make more options later easily. But in the meantime, it's a fun little distraction. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and same thing, find any of the git show melodic interludes and replace them with git setting uh, and the name of that setting. And we can see we're getting a lot of git setting calls here. That's awesome. Um, that set check for serious business is fine. That's the buff window version of that. Um, so our setting calls are getting very nicely genericized. What's your problem with this? Interesting. Have to look into that a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. So that one's replaced. Let's go ahead and replace this one with a git setting call. Great. Uh, what else do we have? In the option window, the initial value of that checkbox is also going to be replaced with git setting and the name of that setting. <laughs> Lotro merchandising link says, Captain, need heat changing 15 ounce mug. So funny thing. Every once in a while, when Cordovan is streaming on Fridays, he's on hiatus currently, but one hopes uh, he's coming back uh, later on in the summer or autumn, and he wears a lovely Standing Stone Games t-shirt. Um, you know, it's got the, the Standing Stones logo, which is the same as the house uh, yard item you can get from the anniversary scavenger hunt. It looks cool. And, you know, I'm not a huge, uh, you know, uh, rah, rah, rah companies kind of thing, but I would wear a Standing Stone Games shirt if it was available, but they can't sell the darn thing. Uh, or at least they're not going to. And they can't sell anything that's specifically Lotro related. Like, I would like to have some of the in-game art or the maps, right? Like, these in-game maps are kind of cool. Uh, I, I would pay some money for this in, in nice, nicer quality than I can print out to hang up on my wall, but they don't, uh, Standing Stone Games doesn't have the, the license to charge money for a, a map print from a Lotro game. They, that's just not in the scope of their license, to my knowledge. And so uh, as much as I might want them to do that, <clears throat> they don't have the, the legal right to do that. Um, so, oh, alas. Chromite points out, yes, um, now, this, this is a, a point of contention, but many of these older style maps are being replaced with some of the newer, um, there we go, uh, newer, more um, radar-like maps that show a little bit more of the topography and are a little less abstract. So we have this map of Breland. Is four four Hell? Yeah, four Hell still the, the N older style. What's really fascinating is to go to the Lotor Wiki and see how these things progressed over time. Uh, because if you come on in to Lotro Wiki uh, for Wokel, generally when people are updating the wiki, they won't, uh, I, I don't know, I'm sure you can delete a file, but they'll go ahead and just update uh, the map. So where is the map? There we go. Uh, so let's uh, click on that map and check out some older versions. So I guess this one's less starkly different, but that's one from 2008. Freeland. Freeland is actually uh, very noticeably different, if I recall correctly. Okay, so this is the current version of it, and this is a, a version of what it used to look like. When does that one come from? 2008. I feel like there were older versions that were wonkier. Um, anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. It's a little bit... Uh, what is that? Oh, okay. Someone made a manual map. Nice. 
So yes, these maps change over time and whether or not you prefer this version or uh, this version, I feel like is a matter of personal preference. I am a fan of this aesthetic. I think it fits better in with the, the feel of Lord of the Rings where your map might be 100 years old and might be completely wrong because that road no longer exists and that bridge fell out and this town now appears um, and whatnot. Kevin D asks about a plugin for interactive map. There is a map plugin, Metro Interface. Um, if you are interested in map stuff, I would check out the More Map, which is more than just the Moors now. Um, but that lets you uh, do things with map images in games, like place markers and annotations on them, I believe. With the downside that you, uh, you don't access that by pressing the M, this is still the in-game map but you can access it with some other button and then you can uh, maybe ha have access to a map that has annotations, comments, uh, notes, that kind of thing. Um, so I've heard good things. I've never gotten into it. Uh, it's just, I have so many things on my plate. It's just one of those, ah, I should do that someday. But I've heard really good things about more map. Uh, and with five stars, and I don't know, how many downloads does this thing have? Uh, 507,000, so half a million downloads, probably not wrong. Who's the developer on that? Garen, awesome. Thanks, Garen. Okay, so, <laughs> all that being said, where were we? Okay, so at this point, there are no more calls to a git show melodic interlude, which means we're safe to go ahead and delete the function. That leaves us with a set show melodic interlude, but also show melodic interlude changed. Oh, well, that's funny. Well, thanks for calling that out, and thanks for the follow, Captain. Um, I'm using Chatty to keep an eye on chat, and apparently it just doesn't care about such things. <laughs> it doesn't. It's not going to show me. Oh well. All right, so we're going to. Hmm? Oh, even better. You, you followed the little redhead. Awesome. You know, it's funny, I'm here, uh, as, and it's a very convenient place to shout into the void, as it were. But I, I don't have a good understanding of how Twitch works. So I'm glad other people do. Okay, so instead of calling uh, or setting a value directly, we're going to go ahead and call assign a uh, callback using the um, show melodic interlude key and our anonymous function here. Where else do we have this? All right, we, uh, those are, we're gonna circle back around to. We have the actual uh, variable itself. And then in here, we can go ahead and pre-delete that. What else do we have? Just the options window. So we can go ahead and come into the setter and start doing that. Okay. So check to change, same thing. Instead of calling that um, intermediate function, we're gonna wanna go ahead and hoist that on up. So let's come on in. And again, we're gonna wanna uh, transition to set setting. So, We'll grab that value here, and we're going to go ahead and call self dot setting settings set setting, and we're going to use the name of that and the value, which is the value of that checkbox. Go ahead and uh, hoist that on up. Okay, and again, we're getting a lot of very similar looking blocks of code, which is great. All right, well, what else do we have? Well, this set show melodic interlude, we can see there's no more instances of that. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Awesome. So, where are we on that? We have self dot setting calls a bunch in the options window. Are we seeing all generic all the time? 
Oh, well, we have theme changed, which has some extra stuff going on there. So we'll, we'll circle back around to that. Uh, get setting, set setting, uh, get theme list, set theme, get setting, set setting, get setting, set setting, get setting, set setting. Awesome. So the real question is, what's going on with the theme? All right, get theme list, no, get theme, there we go. Oh, there's so much complicated stuff here. I can see why. Oh, get theme index though, that's the thing that we care about. Okay, what happens when we set? We also have a theme change function. Where is that called? That is on Warsteed, theme change, theme change. That one's a more complicated uh, callback, yeah. I will say though, the callback itself maybe is updatable. What do we do? We have a self.restart call. In the options window, we have a theme changed. But again, why, are, why do we have this function when we could maybe hoist that on up? So let's go ahead and hoist that. You, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's save the progress we've already made. Well, let's test the progress we've already made. So using the caret window to go to system and plugin manager, we're gonna go ahead and unload and reload. First of all, it did load, so we didn't have any syntax errors. It's one of the benefits of using Visual Studio Code. I make a lot fewer of those. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and come into the options. And again, visible, we had already tested that. But also, use Soliloquy Tracker. Hide UI when serious biz business is active. Show war speech timers. Show melodic interlude. We want to check all of those are still working. So, load, unload. Cool, that one's still checked. Uh, hide UI when serious business. Unload, load. I'm using the, uh, did it save and load properly as a shortcut for um, is it working in general? Now this isn't a full test, but it's a, it's a reasonable, uh, you know, it's a reasonable partial test. Okay, so all four of those were at least save and load properly. Perfect. And we can double check visible in combat that we didn't change any of that code. It's nice to verify. Okay. Uh, Captain has some uh, compliments for Little Redhead in chat. Very nice. Okay, so we have a good opportunity to come in here to our source control and take a snapshot. So, initial changes. I mean, to do simplify the setting system so you don't have to add two new functions for every setting, question mark? Yes. Once it's done and get set can be indexed, yeah, yeah, we'll come back to that. So we're going to go ahead and save that because it is done. And, okay, we'll uh, save our to-do file changes. Looking at buff window, we have uh, an assigned callback call and a get settings call, both of those are great. Okay, in our main, we can see we've changed uh, a named function to get setting, to more for get setting, great. We've changed some uh, callback assignments to use the assign callback function, great. All right, more places where we're using a get settings call and a set setting. Uh, what do we have? Get setting, set setting. Okay. We have get setting, set setting, get setting, set setting, uh, get setting, set, 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 setting. And, oh, this one was just um, an extra space at the end of the line. I'm going to discard that for right now. I'll come back to that. And then finally, these one, two, three, four, five intermediate functions that aren't really um, used here. So did we have one, two, three, four, five? We did. So we're going to take everything except the debug options 
So I'm going to stage the whole thing and then come back in and unstage the debug options. We don't need to commit those. But the rest of this, yeah, we're going to take that. OK, next up in our settings file, <laughs> we have killed these five um, variables that are tracking the callback function and instead have settings changed. Great, love it. We're going to stage that. Uh, we've gone ahead and replaced uh, a whole lot. But it's a little hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to come back in and again, uh, using the power of beyond compare, I'm going to say, don't uh, try to match up this with that. They're completely different. So uh, we have the generic helper function functions, get, set, assign, and trigger. And we have uh, get effect window, visible in combat, soliloquy window used, check for serious business, uh, show war speech timers, and get uh, melodic interlude. So that's R5 that we're eliminating. Awesome. And that all looks great. OK. And then finally, uh, we had a get setting. Uh, we had a assign callback. All of that looks great. So we're going to go ahead and commit all this. So um, Went ahead and grabbed that description from that to-do file that I deleted before I was ready to. Simplify the settings system. Simplified the settings system. Uh, for And this is for the low-hanging fruit. Not every setting was, was done here. But we're going to go ahead and take that snapshot. Awesome. So we're in a great place to come back in and look at that renaming that I was mentioning. Uh, so in the to-do file, I said assigned callback should probably be add callback. Yeah, it should be. So let's find all the assigned callbacks. And that's going to be uh, here. We're going to go ahead and call that add callback. Again, add callback, add callback, add callback. And in here, assigned callback is now add callback, add callback, and where are we? Mm. Oh, over there, in my little uh, upper there. Let's get rid of that. OK, so now the only place assign callback exists is in my to-do file saying get rid of it. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and pull that out. No more assign callback. So. Changed assign callback to add callback. So that's the kind of change that can be really tricky if you don't have a good source control system and kind of trivial if you do have a good source control system. So I'm going to go ahead and do a save all. Come back in, and we can see um, we've got the to do file change, but we can double check that the only thing we changed was assign to add. Okay. Assign to add, assign to add, assign to add. Not that one. Assigned to add and assigned to add. So we can be very confident that this probably didn't break things. Fingers crossed. Uh, best way to find out, go ahead and unload and reload, and we can see awesome things still work. We can even uh, make it track anthems and ballads for a moment. OK. Let's see. Captain D is appreciated of Little Red Hood sharing knowledge and is probably leveling up really fast because of the festivals. Little Red had asked about Avalon Hill game mm -hmm. and wonders if the captain plays board games and the captain does. Awesome. Cool. I am caught up. So we changed the sign callback to add callback. Bam. Without source control, I would feel very nervous about making that kind of a change because there's a change across lots of files, and uh, callbacks don't get uh, called until later. So you have to actually run the, the plugin and, and poke buttons and make sure things work. So for instance, only visible in combat. Uh, unload, 
reload. Cool. And we can see it's working. Awesome. Okay. Um, what else do we have? So I thought I had, once we have done stuff, um, we could extract checkbox creation to a helper function. And I keep alluding to this because I think it's a really good idea. So what would that look like? We have, let's just take this soliloquy of visibility uh, code and let's hoist it up somewhere. Function, uh, make option checkbox. And I don't know what goes here. I don't know what we need to pass in. But I do know that I don't want to use a specific name. I want a generic name in this code. So everywhere I have um, soliloquy visible checkbox, really self dot. I'm gonna go ahead and just um, bulk change that to something else like a checkbox. And that first one is just gonna be a local checkbox. So let's go ahead and move forward with this. Whoops. Now, um, I'm not gonna worry about the, the height changing in this checkbox, but what I am going to worry about is we need a parent because every UI element must be contained by something that is eventually contained by a top level control. So uh, in this case, that is um, going to be the options control. Uh, and we can pass that in here, parent. Okay, what else do we need? We need the thing the, that we're doing. So we need the option name. And with the option name, maybe that's enough. Uh, with the option name, we can go ahead and get the value for, uh, sorry, the text to use as the label. We can also, uh, oh, it looks like we need how far up to make this thing, totally fine. Uh, so get setting, we can go ahead and just use option name. Set setting, we can go ahead and use option name. And what else do we have? So we have set parent, parent, set text, whatever, set position, set size, set checked, option name, check change equals function, which calls set setting with option name. Great. So the only things we need are to go ahead and call self, oh, um, self .combat visible checkbox equals, it's going to be self make option check uh, box. And that's, we're going to pass in parent and the current Y and the option name itself. That's pretty easy. That line's getting a little long, but we'll see. Oh, we don't actually have a Y yet. Um, so that's hard coded to 40 in this case. I'm not happy with that hard coding, but I am happy with all these lines of code. We can just delete. Uh, we can see... The size is the same. The position is going to be the same. We have the text of the parent, the set checked. Yep. So all of that can just be deleted, it looks like. And if so, let's go ahead and unload and reload and come back into options. And it's still there. It still works. Awesome. Uh, so then we want to go ahead and do something very similar. So soliloquy visibility self.soliloquy visible checkbox equals, and here we've got a Y and soliloquy window used. But other than that, we can just go ahead and delete all of that. And the next one, serious business checkbox equals make option parent Y and check for serious business and delete all this. Now, the incrementing of the Y, how far down we are on the page, I kind of want to have the make option checkbox do that, but that kind of ties us into one checkbox per line, and maybe we might want to go ahead and have two or something someday. 
So for, for now, I don't mind uh, having the height, uh, the, the, the top adjustment be done here. But we can uh, keep on going with this. We're going to go ahead and make option checkbox, parent Y, and show more speech timers. There we go. And get rid of the rest of this. And same thing with show melodic interlude checkbox. Um, show melodic interlude. And again, delete a whole bunch of code. And at this point, these comments almost are unnecessary because they were, were delineating these large blocks of code of almost completely copy pasted code once we made some changes. We can come back in here and we can see that these checkboxes are still there. Um, so, do we see a war speech timer? Let's go ahead and double check. We do see a war speech timer. And do we see another one? Awesome. So that setting is still working. That's That gives us good confidence. Looks like uh, Little Redhead has reset the giveaway. Um, let's go ahead and do one more today. Uh, let's see. How does that do that? Maybe Little Redhead will do that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do another Lotro Point giveaway. This is for 100 Lotro Points. Uh, you must be present to win, and we're doing just one win per person today. So, uh, Captain, go ahead and sit this one out, but anyone else do an exclamation point giveaway in chat to uh, get in on that giveaway. We'll go ahead and draw that maybe in about half an hour. Okay. So we have deleted a whole bunch of code. And I love deleting code if I can get away with it. All right, Real has entered the giveaway. Thank you. Why do I have a simple rally? Home? Oh, I used the code. Right, OK. <laughs> Excellent. Captain says, dare I try again? No, I mean, you can, you can enter, but if you're drawn, we'll just uh, skip on to the next one, and that will be your luck for the day, and wouldn't that be sad? Okay, so what did we just do? Well, again, it's very useful to have source control where you can pop it open and say, what did I do? So let's take a look at that. We have a new function, make option checkbox, that is going to generically create a checkbox Oh, but we're not returning the checkbox. That's a really important thing. How is this even working? I don't know. Lou is a mystery to me sometimes. Uh, we do want to go ahead and remember to return checkbox and make sure that, that is being returned uh, for these assignments. So unload, reload. <laughs> Excellent. They're still there. Uh, so that's why we check our code. Um, so this function, make option checkbox, makes the local checkbox, returns the, the thing uh, to the caller. And so we can see all of these lines replaced by one, all of these replaced by one, this by one, this by one. All five of these blocks have been simplified. Excellent. Oh, this function, this file is starting to get space and tab issues. That makes me sad. Excellent point, Little Redhead. Chorless Skies is going to be joining us uh, for his monthly 9 p.m. stream. And he's going off to Mordor. Uh, it's going to be a very full Tuesday lineup. Okay, so that let us uh, double check what we were seeing. We found a, a bug, or well, a potential bug. Excellent. And so in our source control repository, we can go ahead and mark this to do item so all right so used um extracted checkbox creation to helper function excellent now what does that look like we have the to do file we did it awesome right, we can discard that and in the options window, we don't want the show debug options, but I'm pretty sure we want everything else. 
So we have the make options, and all the rest of this is just deleting stuff. Love it. Hmm. The fellow says I should remove... Oh, good point. Thank you. Uh, we don't need that comment about soliloquy visibility. That's just confusing. What was I thinking? So, again, we will unstage that line and come back and clean it up in just a moment. Thanks, and uh, Anna Fellow. I'm very likely to come back in two months and be like, what, what, what the heck? <laughs> Why is that there? So, did, did I miss anything else? Checkbox, set parent, text, position, size, check, check changed, and return. Great. <laughs> it's probably correct now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, commit that as a snapshot, boop, and come back in and get rid of that comment. Excellent. So the only change from uh, completely clean now is the debug options being set to true. So we know we're in a good state. And we can go ahead and unload and reload just to be sure. Great. All right, good catch there. So what do we have? Um, there's, of course, more stuff to do, but I wanted to come back in. Um, I was curious about some of these settings. Uh, some of the yes, no toggle on and off settings, those were the five that we were approaching today. The checkbox up here and four checkboxes down here. But it made me wonder, could other of these settings uh, be made uh, to use the same system? So for instance, get main position X is going into the settings table. And if that's not nil, then it's returning that value. Otherwise it's returning 20. That's interesting. Um, it feels like we could make you, uh, uh, that happen. Uh, what about main position Y? Okay. But then we have a set main position and that's, that's a funny one. Um, we have a combined function. Uh, and it makes you wonder why did we not um, have a combined getter? Um, if you didn't know, in Lua, you can return multiple values. So we can, you can do, for instance, return 200, 400. And as long as the caller does something like local um, x, y equals uh, blah, 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 um, then the values, the multiple values that are returned will go ahead and be assigned. And if there's any sort of a mismatch, then extra stuff just gets dropped on the floor or assigned to nil. So I guess the question is, where are these being used, and why didn't they take advantage of this option? Now, the, the simple answer is maybe they didn't realize they could. Um, a lot of languages out there support single item return or zero, zero or one items. And so Lua supporting n item returns is feels like an exception, especially if you're coming from like the C, C++, C Sharp world, where it's a... Uh, an annoying an annoyance that you can't return more than one thing all all the time and so now in c sharp you've got things like records and you could always just bundle them up into plain old data structures but it, it was extra work you had to do um so what do we have here position x equals that position y equals that that's hilarious okay what about get main position x like i assume it would be the exact same it is okay um, so if we had function settings, uh, get main position, then it would really just be a combination of these two ideas. But I guess the question is, would we want them to be together or separate? Hmm, now I need to think about that. Let's find the setter. Where is this being used? Set main position. Ah, that's what they're doing. They're calling get position, which is returning two values, and they're just implicitly passing them off to set main window position. Uh, and here, it is basically the same thing, right? Like they're uh, saving off the the two uh, parameter return value, and then just passing them back on, which makes you think they could just be passing the call here. Okay, so I can, I can see why they have a, uh, a multi-parameter version of the setter. So I guess the utility of that is good, right? Like we should support uh, passing multiple parameters around like that. So it's really the, the getter functions that don't make sense in this context. Whoa, what did I just do? That's exciting. 
So yeah, this getter, uh, or the use of the getter is to only do one thing at a time, that feels like the, the oddball. And if that's the case, what would that function look like? Function settings get main pos for position. Uh, and in here, we would actually kind of do the same thing, right? So we would have um, local x equals 200, uh, local y equals 200, and then just use the setter value if it's available, right? If self.settings table, and I don't need to uh, copy a bunch of this. Sorry, I don't need to type a bunch of this. I do need to copy it. Uh, okay, so if that main pos x is not equal to nil, then, uh, and we're entering a return here, x equals main pos x. And same thing with y. So if there's a y value, go ahead and assign that to y, and then return x comma y. And so we can go ahead and get a main pos that behaves the same as both of these uh, getters do. Uh, but more importantly, it's a more unified getter and setter where they take the same number of parameters. And I've, I've looked at this before and it's just uh, 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 tickled my brain in an unpleasant way. It's like this, the getters are getting one and the setter is taking two and that just did not uh, feel intuitive. So this is really uh, for, for me uh, to make my life easier. Uh, but hopefully, yeah, other people find it interesting as well. We're going to go ahead and come back in, find all of those calls to get main pos x. Uh, okay, so cool. Local pos x y. That can really be local pos uh, x pos y equals self dot settings get main pos. And that's it. And we can do the same thing over here. Oh, that was it. All right, delete that function. Same thing with get main pos y. Excellent. Yes, there is an active giveaway for 100 Lotra points. Type exclamation point giveaway into the Twitch chat to enter. One entry per stream, so no more for the captain. And then you must be present to win in the Twitch stream. You could also be on Lotra if you want to, but you don't have to. All right, where is this get main position y being used? Oh, I already got rid of it. Okay, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. And now we have a get main position and set main position, which is very nice. And hopefully we can go ahead and imitate that with some of these other getters and setters for window positions. In fact, there's a certain amount of common code that we're going to see, and maybe that's going to get squished down here. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and unload and reload. And that window is in the right spot. Let's go ahead and move the window over to the left and unload and reload. And great, everything seems to be working just fine there. So uh, we have a getter for main position. We have a setter for main position. The soliloquy window, I followed the one at a time um, for the getter and the double for the setter. And now I have regretted that decision. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that up too. Let's take a look. How often is this used? Just the once. Awesome. So if we come back in here, oops, uh, and make a new function, function settings, get a soliloquy position. And we're gonna do something very similar. In fact, I, so similar, I'm just gonna copy paste this whole getter function, which is a good sign that we need to do some refactoring. Uh, and instead, we're gonna have soliloquy position X and soliloquy position Y. And that was the only change, that, that, that is a sign. Okay, uh, in here, we're gonna go ahead and do local pos X pos Y equals and we're just gonna go ahead and do a little copy paste. And we're done with that. Okay, so we should not see any more usage of the X or the Y. Yep, and we can safely get rid of those. And now we just have get position and set position. Now, it's reasonable to say why uh, do we have almost identical functions here? 
And yeah, let's, what would that be if we had a generic function? Function settings, set window position, uh, window name, and function get, oh, settings, get window position, window name. So what that look like? Would, oh, and I guess I could put them in the same order that they currently appear, and that'll make this a little bit easier. So the getter is going to do everything the same, except it's going to be a window name dot, um, and concatenate with the dot dot operator x. And same thing with dot dot y. Now you could pre-construct these strings uh, as local variables or something, no biggie. Uh, but now we have uh, the ability to call uh, get window position main. Oh, you know what? Pos, that should be pos, uh, pos x and pos y. P O S for position. Uh, and that way you're just passing in main or soliloquy or melodic interlude or whatever else. And then set. What does the setter look like? Well, I imagine it's going to look very similar. But we're going to go ahead and take the window name and a pos x and pos y for position x and position y. And then, uh, same thing, we're going to concatenate window name with position x and window name with position y. And that's it. So um, we can add a little comment here to guide us in the future. Pass in names like main or soliloquy, which I still don't feel confident typing very fast. Okay, um, and we'll go ahead and put that as a comment for both of these. Okay, so we have getting, uh, having default values of 200, getting from the table, so soliloquy pos x, main pos x, um, etc., or saving to that. Lord Zach says, hey, hello to you, welcome to the chat. Uh, there is currently a giveaway for 100 loacher points. Go ahead and type exclamation point giveaway if you want to get in on that. Right now we're doing some refactoring of the settings code in the minstrel buffs because it's just been bugging me for a little while. So instead of having a get main window position and a set main window position and a get soliloquy position and set soliloquy position and get melodic interlude position and, uh, and so on, uh, we're going to go ahead and maybe just have a generic get uh, window position and set window position. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and have get window position. Oops. So we are doing this with the main window. Uh, and we're going to find all get main position. Shouldn't be too many of them. Now, is this overkill? A little bit. Each one of these functions is only called once. But on the other hand, each of these functions is only called once. Why do they exist? So, uh, so get uh, window uh, position, I think I called it. Let's see. Uh, get window position. There we go. So at this point, there is no get main position call. And set main position. Where do we see that? Because we want that to be set window position. And I'll go ahead and copy that off. So settings and set main position. That needs to be self dot settings dot uh, colon. Sorry. Um, set window position. And again, that's going to be main. And for the next two parameters, we should be able to pass in the result of get position. Uh, which is going to be a tuple that should expand into our three parameters. However, 
Uh, that's the part of the buff window UI locked. Um, so we're going to go ahead and test that out. OK. Test changes by uh, unlocking and locking windows and moving them around. Okay, so that's just a note for my future, and now I don't have to remember what I was what I was gonna do. All right, so in settings we should have a get to the look. Oh, sorry, set main window position. Oh, there's a keyboard shortcut to open up a command window, which seems great, except I keep hitting it when I don't mean to. Oh well. Okay, and we finally have a save main window main position setting. Neat. Okay, so if the buff window is not equal to nil, then we're going to go ahead and get the position of that and save. Sure seems like the buff window should be in charge of that, huh? Okay, function buff window save position. Uh, and for that, we're just going to go ahead and self save position. And that's going to come on in here for a self settings, uh, set window position, main, and get position. But that means instead of main having to know how to do this, uh, we're going to have a self.buff window uh, save position. And let's pass it off so we don't have to get the position of it and we don't have to know how to save it. And Adele says, watching things get generalized is so satisfying to watch. Yeah, it's it's... It's a, a nice and easy thing. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for a stream this week, and I knew that this was lurking in the background. It's like, let's do more generalizing. It's so good. It can't be every week, but sometimes it can be. If only it was so easy in daily coding stuff. Yeah, I try not to, nowadays, I try not to do this in the first place. I try to catch myself as soon as I start doing that copy-pasting to begin, or that, that desire to, oh, I just need this over here. It's like, okay, uh, where can I put this as common code? So my day-to-day -day job, I feel like it happens less, but part of many programmers or software engineers' day-to-day -day jobs is looking at old code. And you know, just like this, this is a classic. I didn't write this, some most of this, um, but it's here and it works and we can make it a little bit easier to maintain. And you'll see a lot of that in corporate code where someone wrote something five, 10, 20 years ago and it still works, right? You're not gonna throw it away just because it um, has some copy paste issues. Uh, so slowly tweaking and generalizing and, and bringing things together is, a, I feel like it's an important skill to uh, get comfortable with. And uh, so, you know, practicing it on something quote unquote trivial like a plugin is, is, a, is a fun way to kind of reinforce those skills. Okay, so that being said, I'm actually, uh, I'm gonna head and do a thing in, in, uh, that's been bothering me. So there's a, a, not a separation of concerns between main and buff window. Main does a lot of poking into the internals of buff window. And this was just an easy chance to say, no, no more, no, just tell it to save its position and stop. Uh, but uh, there's a lot more that needs to be done on that, uh, 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 point with the main. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and see where are we. So set main position is currently only referenced here. Everywhere else is now using set window position. Great. Gone. So same thing, gets the look we position. What's going on here? We want to replace that with get window position. So, um, self settings get soliloquy position. Okay. We're going to replace that with get window position, and we're going to use soliloquy as the name. I want to remember to quote that. Okay. So, nothing is using that anymore. Awesome. And same thing with set soliloquy position. Where is that getting used? Uh, just one place. So we're going to go ahead and 
do a self dot settings and instead of set soliloquy position, genericize it, set window position. Now the window name again is just going to be soliloquy. And then we're going to use self get position in that call. Great. <laughs> Lord Zach says, what's a soliloquy? I don't know. What's a soliloquy with you? That nah, doesn't really work. Well, if you're not familiar with it, soliloquy of spirit is given to a uh, blue line uh, minstrels. And it is a stackable up to three times heal over time uh, that is just kind of handy. So it's it's kind of thing where I'm where I'm healing, or at least on, on a level sixty server. Maybe this doesn't work in endgame, but when I'm uh, uh, healing uh, an instance or a raid, uh, I'll like to throw three of those on the tank, so that they're getting those constant uh, heals even when my attention is elsewhere. Uh, it stacks up to three times. It also provides a uh, inner strength buff, uh, which gives one, two, or three percent um, physical and tactical mitigation, I believe. And so a while back, I was like, hey, wouldn't it be great if the, the plugin could show me how many of these uh, my target had? So that's the Soliloquy of Spirit Tracker. So we can see it's not currently active. So we go ahead and check that box. Well, that's embarrassing. Let me go ahead and unload and reload just to make sure we're in a good state. There we go. Okay, so we have the Soliloquy of Spirit tracker, and we're seeing two things. We, that I have one of the uh, Soliloquy of Spirits, and that my inner strength buff is either one, two, or three. And we also have timers for each of those. Uh, you misread my kin name. Well, there is something in front of it. No, when we were coming up on Treebeard, not so hasty, uh, it seemed like a very tree beard thing to name a kin. Uh, okay, so one of the things about this is Inner Strength only has a, um, a cooldown of, or a timeout of 30 seconds, whereas the uh, Soliloquy of Spirits have 45 seconds. And so that 1, 2, or 3% mitigation on physical and tactical damage uh, goes away really easily. And so that was what I wanted, was the UI to show me who has what. And... So that's the soliloquy of spirit tracker, and it's a mouthful. All right, so that's the soliloquy window information. So if I go ahead and unload and reload, we can see the soliloquy tracker window uh, is in the place that it got moved to. Awesome. Awesome. It looks like the 100 point giveaway has been drawn. Thanks, little redhead, for managing that. Um, we have real Tef being drawn. So if you're here, go ahead and give a, a message in the Twitch chat. And then Little Redhead will go ahead and message you your code. Okay. While they are doing that, hey, they're here. So uh, if you haven't done it before, when you go to the Lotro store in game, by clicking the Lotro store button, and you can do this here or at the, the character selection screen. There's a redeem code uh, along the top here. Go ahead and click that, paste your code in, and hit apply, and you'll get 100 added to your account. Okay, so back to the settings window. Oh, I forgot to actually save that. So, move soliloquy over, unload, reload, and it's moved, great. Okay, so um, we have a set window position, great. Set soliloquy position, what's using that? Nothing, get rid of it. Delete all the code. And <laughs> we have get melodic interlude position X, Y, and set. Same thing, same thing, let's do the same thing. Uh, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace the setter with a set window position, awesome. So that's gonna be colon, set window position. Uh, and this is going to be Melodic Interlude, great. So that's the window name. And then the position, X, Y, is going to be this self get position. And then we can uh, delete the rest of that. Excellent. And where else do we see it? Oh, that was it. <laughs> Just that one place. So we're going to go ahead and delete this. 
and then we have the getters. Now we're going to do this, uh, both of these in one uh, fell swoop as it were. Uh, we're going to go ahead and find the uses of this. That is so funny. We're calling set position with the results of the two gets. Oh, that's painful. Why did I think that was a good idea? I, so in general, I try to mimic the style that is currently present, even if I don't exactly agree with it, because consistent code is better than half of being quote unquote right and half of being wrong. It's just that is way harder to read. Um, OK. So we're going to go ahead and uh, consolidate these down in one go. So we're going to use the get window position for the window name. And that's a melodic interlude. Uh, so that's going to be a self dot uh, settings get window position. And that is a melodic interlude. All right. And then we don't need to use these individual getters anymore. Uh, OK, what else do we have? Oh, well, that's a concern. All right, melodic interlude title got changed. No. Oh, it's a, okay. Okay, that's different. Cool. Um, okay, so going back to settings, uh, get melodic interlude position Y, no longer in use. Awesome. And we have get melodic interlude position X, also no longer in use. Also kill. OK. Generic window position functions. Uh, pass in names like uh, main or soliloquy. And I'm going to go ahead and say. Uh, let's go ahead and put some little comments here to help me find these later. End generic window fu uh, position functions. Okay, so let's uh, take a high level look at what we just did. We're gonna have to make sure it uh, works. So we're gonna go ahead and oh, save all is done. Let's load this on up. Awesome. Let's go ahead and move some stuff around. So the tracker over to the right, uh, minstrel buffs over to the right, melodic interlude over to the left. Great. Let's go ahead and unload and reload. And excellent. They're all back where they should be. So that's a good sign. Let's come on into the source control window fork and take a look. All right, we did test changes by unlocking and moving stuff around. Great. Don't need that anymore. Uh, and uh, what else do we have? Um, generis, uh made generic functions for window positions. OK, so in the buff window, um, we have a helper function save position because the main window was poking its fingers where it didn't belong. Uh, we're using x, y equals get window position main. Uh, save position, set window position, main, and the get position. Awesome. Uh, and that all looks great. In main, uh, instead of poking where our fingers don't belong in buff window, we just call buff window save position. Let it handle that. Okay, melodic interlude window. Uh, instead of two gets, we have a single get. And now we have a set window position as well. Great. Option window. Oh, that's just the debug setting. Settings. <laughs> Excellent. I kind of want to see this in a larger form factor. OK, so let's go ahead and isolate the generic functions. And we can see we now have get window position and set window position, where before we had get main position x, get main position y, set main position, get soliloquy position x and y, set soliloquy, get melodic interlude position x, y, set melodic interlude. So that feels very satisfying to me. Because again, uh, code that doesn't exist can't break. Uh, all the settings changes looked good, so we're going to go ahead and bring those in. And finally, the soliloquy tracker window, uh, we can see an XY got uh, consolidated down. Uh, some white space changed. No worries there. 
Uh, and then the set soliloquy position changed to set window position soliloquy. Lovely. So, made generic functions for window positions. So many things deleted. Okay, so minimize our fork and come back in to here. So what does our settings func uh, uh, file look like now that we've done that? And also, also, what is, so I'm using it myself because the syntax um, does not seem to understand settings very well. And I'm wondering what's going on with that, but uh, we'll come back to that. Okay, so what do we have? We have a load, awesome, uh, where we're looking for specific things. We have defaults, uh, we're fixing up numbers that could be decimals, all of that's great. When save, we go ahead and just save stuff. Get window position, that's the generic function we just made, get and set. Generic helper functions for get settings. Uh, those are more like yes, no, on, off kind of things. What else do we have? We have some localization stuff. Great, no uh, no notes there. And theme settings, that's more complicated. I feel like the uh, get theme index and set theme index are, hand, are, are something we could uh, look at next. Um, and perhaps the set is on worst deed. Is there a git is on worst deed? Is on worst deed. No. It just, you set it and then it's used internally. Okay. Um, is on, no. Git theme. Okay, there is a git theme index. Okay, interesting. Lord Zach makes reference to an old Spice commercial. Uh, I, I suspect someone could remake that in Lord of the Rings effectively. Uh, if I didn't have so much on my plate, I might uh, investigate this. Uh, I think that'd be very amusing. But if you do make that, let me know. Or if there's someone who already made it, let me know. Oh, hey, um, first of all, Muba has mentioned a producer's letter. There's a lot of stuff in there, especially if you care about legendary servers. I highly encourage you to go look it out, uh, look it up, um, especially things like Anor. Uh, and it sounds like Anor is hitting end of life and will be winding down this the, the end of the summer. Uh, I think there's other stuff in there, but I was so distracted with that legendary server news, I just kind of glazed over the rest of it. I need, I still need to go back and reread it. So I do recommend that. Uh, Little Redhead has posted um, today's lineup, including first Little Redhead, then myself, then I7, then Shoreless Skies. And that means I'll be wrapping up here in the next couple of minutes, about six minutes from now. I think I7 is going to go ahead and take the stream over. Uh, there'll be a little break there in the middle for a few minutes, and then they'll get going. So, while I'm musing on this get theme index, set theme index thing, if you have any thoughts or questions, go ahead and pop them into, or any final questions, comments, concerns, pop them into chat there. And otherwise, uh, it's been delightful to have you all here uh, and to give away some lecture points. What's going on here? Get plugin version, okay. Excellent, and there's my reminder <laughs> that I have five minutes left. Oh, excellent question. Um, so, uh, Lord, uh, Lord Zach says, what does the tilde equals um, operator do? And so the, the answer is it is not equals to. So in a lot of brace languages, you'll see this written as uh, exclamation point equals, which is what I, I am kind of used to uh, looking at. So exclamation point equals in a lot of languages is not equals to, which is uh, should be functionally the opposite of um, double equals, equals to. Uh, and so in this case, in Lua, uh, we don't use the exclamation point equal, we use tilde equal. I don't know the historical reason why, we do that, but that's what you're looking for is tilde equal or double equals. So we'll go ahead and delete those because those aren't right. 
Um, and so it's just a, you know, it's a different muscle memory, but it is right next to, to the exclamation point key on my keyboard. So it's not a terrible imposition to just use the one over the other, uh, but every once in a while it catches me up. And so using something like Visual Studio Code that has better syntax highlighting and um, parsing will tell you, oh, hey, Lua should use tilde is equal. Good to know. Let's go ahead and do that. And so um, in Visual Studio Code, uh, I have a keyboard shortcut. I think it defaults to control period, but uh, check your own uh, setting. And when it has suggestions like this, it'll pop up a little um, box like this and say, if you click it, it'll just make the change for you. It's great. Um, okay. So we have a Git plugin version. That's good. The set is on war theme. Git war steed theme index. Is that ever used? What's the point of this if it's always one? Okay, set is on Warsteed. So I guess the theory was maybe they would have more than one Warsteed theme at some point, but since they didn't, they just hard coded it to one. Okay, I, I can dig it. Um, get theme index, uh, get theme which is based on whether or not you're on a war steed. Okay, get theme list. That seems like a weird helper, but how often is that used? In the options window, just in the options window, it's just, why is that here? Would your settings control what theme? That's weird, but don't need to change it. Uh, get show anthem time, get show anthems, get fixed. Fascinating, okay. So some less generic functions that have specific things that they're interested in. Okay, all of that's good. I think we've made some really good progress here. Let's go back to the to-do file. I think at this point, uh, we're done with settings. Go back to the shadows. No, go back to the melodic interlude window and add those skills, exclamation point. Awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this back up. Um, and the rest of these will move down a little bit in priority. Uh, and this is just a poor man's version uh, of um, a to-do list that with modifiable priority. You just move them up and down in, a, in a, a text file. Everything else is more complicated and better than this. All right, so that's a great place to go ahead and pause for now. So, um, cool, yeah. I haven't seen any other questions besides Lord Zach's question on Lua syntax. Uh, you can find out more information about Lua at lua.org. Um, so when in doubt, uh, you can go and brush up on your Lua skills there. Okay. So, it is the last Tuesday of the month again, so don't forget to tune in for Shoreless Skies is Beneath Your Feet at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Today they're visiting Mordor. And coming up next is i7 with our first stream on the Lotar Stream Twitch channel. Uh, and with that, that's all we're going to go ahead and cover today. Thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of Lotro plugins. Uh, stay tuned for i7 stream coming up next. And I do hope to see you here next week. And until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.